Then, okay, I'm talking about uh, the functional biomechanics and offloading fundamentals, uh, uh, using more images and demonstrating uh, uh, videos just to uh, show clear what happened uh, in the risk uh, food, okay? Uh, the first image is this, this uh, video that try to demonstrate two of the main uh, etiological factors for uh, risk food. One is compression, soft tissue compression of the heel. And then what happens when the food moves forward, creating a shear force? Because shear force is also the uh, one of the main factors also creating risk as an ulcer or another. Also, let me show you what happened when the uh, body weight is placed on the forefoot, uh, then creates a flattening of the uh, medial arch and creating an increased uh, uh, joint pressure, also creating a risk uh, within the feet. Uh, this also can be related with the uh, trajectory and velocity of the center of force or center of pressure. Uh, when can you can see in your uh, in the image on your uh, left, you can see the straight line divided in different segments. Sh uh, low, uh, sorry, shorter segments and longer segments means that the the, the foot is uh, uh, walking uh, faster and slower, and then creating also a breaking. A process related with the shear force. In the video that you can see the pressure uh, on uh, on the medial uh, image, you can see how this center of pressure trajectory is broken in different uh, in different directions. It means that the force goes forward and backward, and at the same time creating a high pressure and high shear, specifically in the forefoot. That's why the forefoot is the more uh, risky or more important area to take attention in order to prevent this kind of complications. Also, this video is interesting because you can see a normal, means normal food walking on a treadmill. But when we uh, just see what happened in real food, we can see that when the heel is off the ground, is just because the uh, tibia moves forward, moving just tibia and the rear foot while the forefoot is in the flat position, creating in the midfoot a very high pressure. And then this is a very risky foot, specifically with the, uh, as, a, as a, when appear the uh, neuroarthropathy as a, or a charcot foot. Uh, we can check also this kind of pressure when we can see the heel lifting the ground and the pressure is not moving normally to the forefoot, uh, but is placed in the midfoot, creating also this kinetic image uh, with higher pressure in the, in the plantar midfoot. Uh, well, uh, this is uh, a very uh, common situation when we can see a collapsed foot uh, related with the charcoal foot or uh, also with the surgical processes that creates a prominence in the, mid, in the midfoot that could produce or symptomatology or the high risk of uh, ulceration. And then uh, when, the, when we are to, we, we have to uh, struggle when people that don't want to wear uh, high uh, walking boots as, as, uh, as uh, demonstrated before, or the low, this, oh, the low walking boot, we need to construct this, this uh, ugly uh, orthotic, ugly because uh, it has been uh, worn for two years, but we try to do this, an accommodation of the prominence in, uh, of the bony prominence of the, in the plantar foot, but also we need to check the effectiveness of the uh, orthotic uh, when we decrease theoretically the pressure. In the left uh, image, you can see the, uh, the foot walking uh, without the orthotic. On the, le on the right, you can see the same foot in the same moment, but using the orthotic that I shown you before. And you can see in the place in, with higher pressure, you can see how this pressure is really low, passing from almost 7,700 uh, kilopascals 
to 100 kilopascals. It's very interesting uh, to check the uh, how the orthotic is uh, real decreasing the pressure and on the other side is not increasing pressure in other areas. Uh, also, when you, we create a uh, uh, offloading process beneath the first metatarsal head with an cut out, we need to check also this pressure. And you can see this uh, the effect of the orthotic in a simple way when you can use before the orthotic and uh, after a few months uh, later on uh, when we removed the uh, calluses and we can see a pretty normal uh, skin beneath the orthotic patterns. As you can see in the uh, value tables, the peak pressure, uh, uh, pressure time integral and peak pressure gradient also are decreased. We need to check always that the, uh, uh, the orthotic or the devices uh, works in the proper way. Um, this is uh, just a, a, a very interesting, simple study that we made a few years ago in which we uh, check the effectiveness of the insole, the normal insole of the normal shoe when we wore this, uh, this shoe in a few months. In, your, uh, in the images on, the, on your right, in the, in the top, you can see in the uh, uh, right uh, a brand new insole and in the left a uh, six-month used insole. And here we can check in the central metatarsal peak pressure value how after six months of wearing a normal shoe, the pressure increased uh, almost a 30%. That's important because uh, we need to understand that when we, when we are checking the pressure barefoot, it's not normal because the people were, uh, are wearing uh, footwear. And then, and then we need to understand that the footwear decreases the pressure, but the insole of this footwear also works in decrease or lose the effect of decreasing this uh, pressure. Also, uh, fighting with some difficult patients. Uh, here we can show, we, you can see a uh, different process of the healing ulcer in the central metatarsals using just an offloading simple device in the plantar uh, shoe. The problem was that this patient uh, eventually uh, underwent an amputation because uh, an infection uh, complicate a lot is this food, but it was a really amazing work. See a we, uh, week uh, by week uh, how this ulcer was uh, healing and and closing the this uh, this uh, wound in in the plantar food. Um, also, it's important to take in mind that when we sh uh, decide to choose the different materials to work, uh, we uh, don't we don't need to take in mind only the simple effect, because if you see the image on your left, you can see two, two rubber uh, insoles, normal material, uh, Astroform and aero Aerosorb, and Lunatech, this is EVA material, harder, more rigid, and you can see the effect of these simple materials checking in a normal foot. And if we need to decide what kind of material we try to use in a, in a risky food, probably uh, looking for the values of the, this uh, test, we choose the aerosol because the pressure and all uh, kinetic parameters are uh, lower than the others. But the real thing is that when we use just one week, these materials, these materials are compressed, losing absolutely the effectiveness of the a reduction of the pressure. Then we need to understand how this material works and how long the effect is working as well. Um, to fa the, finally, I, 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 I is is not a, 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 a statement about the, what happened with with uh, with a, a people who doesn't uh, show uh, any symptomatology, any tendency to deformity, any keratotic pattern, nothing. It looks like a very normal fit, but when we check this fit, uh, then we can see that the pressure in the meat uh, metatarsal, in the central metatarsal are uh, uh, higher than eight 
uh, 100 kilopascals. These are a very high pressure. And then we need to check the food, despite this food is, presents nothing, uh, or though we can suspect nothing about this, uh, even this we need to check in order to put uh, some treatment to reduce the, the risk. Uh, then, uh, just uh, thank you. Uh, I, I guess that you uh, enjoy these images. Thank you again, uh, Ariel, for for your for your kind invitation. And we need to work together for the same goal in order to increase the quality of life of our patients. Thank you so much.